In this video, I'll show you how to set up a spreadsheet to automate the computations for Euler's method. Previously, we've used a made-up disease called the one-legged R or syndrome. For building and working with an SIR model, the things we needed to know were that the infection would last three days, it had a transmission coefficient of 0.0002, and when we started collecting information, there were 6,000 susceptible individuals, 10 infected individuals, and 5 removed individuals, people who had either recovered or sailed away in search of buried treasure. And we created three differential equations to model the rates at which individuals transitioned between the susceptible, infected, and removed groups. We also had a couple of other important relationships. The amount of change in the number of people in a group could be approximated by multiplying the rate by the amount of change in time. We could compute the number of individuals in each group at a particular time value by adding the number of people at the previous time value to the change in the number of people. And since we're assuming that nobody is entering or leaving the population, the net change in the number of people in the groups combined is zero. And I'm going to rewrite this last equation, subtracting delta s and delta r, to get that delta i is equal to negative delta s minus delta r. Now, let's start working with our spreadsheet. I'm going to be using Google Sheets for this demonstration, but this method should work with pretty much any spreadsheet software. We'll start by entering all of the time values we'll be using. Here, T is telling us the number of days that have elapsed since we started collecting data. Then, we'll enter the initial values for S, I, and R. Then, we'll add the time interval we're using. In this example, we'll use an interval of one day between predictions. Now, let's start incorporating the formulas. Click on the first empty cell in the S prime of T column. Click on the function bar and type an equal sign. This is where we'll enter the formula for S prime. The formula for S prime of T is negative 0.0002 times S times I. So start by typing negative 0.0002. Then a multiplication symbol. Then click on the value of s of 0. You could also type in the location of the spreadsheet cell. In this case, it's b2. Then enter a multiplication symbol back in the function bar. Then click on the value of i of 0. Alternately, you could type in the location of the spreadsheet cell. In this case, it's e2. So what we've done is to enter the formula for s prime of t. And if you hit enter, we'll see that s prime is equal to negative 12 when t equals 0. Next, let's compute the values of delta s. The formula for delta s is s prime times delta t. So click on the first empty cell in the delta s column, and then on the function bar and type an equal sign. Click on the value of s prime of 0. Then click on the function bar and type a multiplication symbol. Then click on the value for our time step. Alternatively, you can enter its spreadsheet location, in this case, k2. Then click on the function bar between the k and the 2 and type a dollar sign. This is going to make sure the formula always references the k2 cell when we automatically fill values in later on. So now we have entered the formulas for delta s, and if you hit the enter key, the value of delta s will be calculated for t equals 0. Next, let's compute the value of s of 1. We'll use the formula s of t equals s of t minus 1 plus delta s. Click on the cell for s of t where t equals 1 and type an equal sign. Click on the value for s of 1. Click on the function bar and type plus d2 because that is the location of the value of delta s. Alternatively, you could have typed plus and then clicked on the cell that has the value of delta s. So now we have entered the formula for computing s of 1. Hit the Enter key, and the spreadsheet will calculate the value of s of 1. Next, let's compute the values of r prime. Click on the first empty cell in the r prime column, and then click on the function bar. Type an equal sign. We'll start entering the formula for r prime which is i of t divided by 3. Then click on the cell for i at t equals 0. Alternatively, you could type the location of the cell, 
in this case, e2. Then click back on the function bar and type divided by 3. Now we've entered the formula for r prime of t. Hit the Enter key, and the spreadsheet will calculate the value of r prime for t equals 0. Next, let's compute delta r. Click on the cell for delta r at t equals 0, and type an equal sign into the function bar. We'll be using the same equation as we did for delta s. Click on the value for r prime at t equals 1, or you could type the cell location, i2. Then type a multiplication symbol and click on the value for the time step. Then click in the function bar between the k and the 2 and type a dollar sign. Now we've entered the formula for delta r. Hit the Enter key, and the spreadsheet will compute the value of delta r. Next, we'll compute the value of r at t equals 1. Click on the cell in the r column that corresponds to t equals 1. Instead of using the function bar, we'll type the formula directly into the cell. Start by typing an equal sign. Then type h2, which is the cell with the value of r at t equals 0. Then type plus j2 to add the value of delta r for t equals 0. Now we have entered the formula for r at t equals 1. Hit the Enter key, and the spreadsheet will compute the value of r at t equals 1. Now let's move on to compute the values for i, the number of infected individuals. There are two ways to do this. One way is to compute the values of i prime using the formula. This will work, but we're going to use a shortcut. We're going to rely on the relationship that the amount of change in the number of infected individuals is equal to negative delta s minus delta r. We'll start by clicking in the cell in the delta i column for t equals 0. We'll type the formula directly into the cell and type the cell locations, although you could also click on the cells instead of typing their locations. Start by typing an equal sign. Then type negative 1 times d2, which is the cell location for delta s. Then type minus j2, which is the cell location for delta r. Then hit the Enter key. And the spreadsheet will compute the value for delta i. Next, we'll compute the value of i at t equals 1. Click on the cell in the i column that corresponds to t equals 1, and type an equal sign. We'll type the formula directly into the cell. Type e2, which is the cell location for i, at t equals 0. Then type plus g2, which is the cell location for delta i. Then hit the Enter key. And the spreadsheet will compute the value of i at t equals 2. Now we're ready to automate the computations. We'll be using the fill down tool. Click on the cell for s at t equals 1. You'll notice the lower right corner of the cell has a small square. This is called the fill handle. Move the cursor to the fill handle and it will change into a crosshair symbol. Click and drag down. What this does is it takes the formula that we had entered into cell b3 and copies it down the entire column. But when it does this, it updates the cell references. So, for example, the formula for the last cell in this column references cells b11 and d11. These are the values that we'd use to compute the value of s at t equals 10 days. Since we haven't yet filled the delta s column, the values for s aren't changing, but they'll update once we fill each of the columns. So let's do that. Click on the cell for s prime at t equals 0 days and move the cursor to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values. Click on the cell for delta s and move the cursor to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values. Then click on the cell with the values for the infected group and move the cursor to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values. Now that we've started to fill in the values for the infected population, all of the values for s, s prime, and delta s automatically fill in because they all depended on the values of i. Click on the cell for the delta i values and move the cursor to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values. We can see that all of the previous values have also updated because they depended on delta i. Click on the cell for the r of t values and move the cursor to the fill handle. 
Click and drag down to fill the values of R. Click on the cell for the R' prime of T values and move the cursor to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values of R'. Prime. Finally, click on the cell with the delta R values and move to the fill handle. Click and drag down to fill the values. Notice how all of the values in the table have updated. Now, the columns of S, delta S, I, delta I, R, and delta R are showing us numbers of individuals, but you can't have a fraction of an individual. However, it is important in our theoretical model to keep the decimal places for accuracy in our predictions. But what we can do is to make the table easier to read by having the spreadsheet hide the decimal parts of each value. So we can click on the cell for S of 0 and then drag to the lower right corner of the table. Then, in the Google spreadsheet, move the cursor to the icon to decrease the decimal places. This is one aspect that will work differently in different spreadsheet programs. Then click, and all of the values will only display the whole number part. And now we have a prediction for the number of susceptible, infected, and removed individuals after 10 days. By using a spreadsheet, we were able to automate the computations and could easily continue filling these values down to make predictions for any number of days after we started collecting data.